may have their own comments uh, later this evening, and I would certainly welcome them. Uh, but before our traditional moment of silence, I did have a few remarks I wanted to make. This was a day of terrible tragedy and loss. We mourn the life of Mr. Kong Lee, a beloved father and friend and member of our, our community. Uh, take a look at the Facebook page for his coffee shop, Caffeine, to see the outpouring of love and devotion for Mr. Lee. We grieve for his family, and we grieve for the families of those who were injured, especially those who remain in various serious condition at both Duke Hospital and UNC Hospital. And there are people who continue to be in very serious condition. At the same time that it was a day for, of, of loss and grief, it was a day which, by the time, even very quickly during that day, it gave me a great sense of gratitude for our incredibly brave, incredibly professional first responders. For the, gave me a great sense of gratitude for the PNC, Pub, Public Service of North Carolina employee, who came to the site to try to cut off the gas before it exploded. For the firefighters who cleared the coffee house and truly saved many, many lives. For those same firefighters who were literally blown down and concussed by the explosion and who somehow got up, got back to their truck, and turned their hoses on the fire. At the Durham Bulls game on Thursday night, I threw out the first pitch. And afterwards, a friend of mine came up to me and told me this story. He and his wife were sitting together at Caffeine in the coffee shop, which they loved. They loved working there. They were working there on their computers, on the business that they run together, this couple. Their two-year-old daughter was at home with a babysitter. The firefighters came into the coffee shop and insisted that they leave. According to what he told me, they were the last people out of that coffee shop that morning, 90 seconds before the blast. And as they told me, those firefighters saved their lives. I feel enormous gratitude for the emergency medical responders. It just so happened that I got a ride down to the scene with Chief Zoldos, who happened to be at City Hall, and with Deputy City Manager Bo Ferguson. And when we arrived and got out of the car, Chief Zoldos drove us down. We saw people bloody lying near the corner of Morgan and Duke Streets. But each of them was already being attended to as soon as this was after the blast by a medic, administering the care that they needed and getting them into the ambulances and off to the hospital. <clears throat> it was just an incredibly smooth, professional, and brave operation. And meanwhile, the fire was just blazing, blazing so nearby. I feel tremendous gratitude for the folks at Duke Hospital and Duke Regional who activated their emergency protocols to take in the flood of 17 patients, several of them severely injured, and then later our firefighters who went over who had been concussed as well. I feel pride when I remember watching how our leadership coordinated their work on the scene. Chief Davis was there with our police officers to coordinate our police officers, setting a setting a a boundary. Mr. Van Fleet and Dr. Anjani Joyner for the emergency medical services, and Dr. Joyner was there making sure that people got on the stretchers and into the ambulances. Mr. Jim Groves with emergency management, and especially our new fire chief, literally in a trial by fire, Chief Zoldis. These people did very powerful and effective work, and there was never, no one missed a beat. No one missed a beat. Our folks were prepared, and it showed. They were professional, and they were incredibly brave, especially those firefighters who stood up against that enormous fire with their hoses just a few feet away. And when they grew tired, another group 
of firefighters stepped up to take their place. I want to especially express thanks tonight to two people who have largely gone unnoticed in our community's expression of communal gratitude. Our city manager, Tom Bonfield, was at a conference across the country when the explosion occurred. So in charge here at City Hall, in charge of the city, was Deputy City Manager Wanda Page, and she was here at City Hall holding down the fort and running the city. And on site at Duke Street was Deputy City Manager Bo Ferguson. These are two supremely capable and wise people. I could not have been more proud of them. Keith Chadwell's not bad either. <laughs> Bo knew just when to ask a question at the site, just when to step back. He struck the perfect tone in the field with our managers, with the press, with our community. Well done, Bo. I really thought you did a remarkable job on site. And Wanda, thanks for running the city and keeping us going while everything was going on. And finally, I want to thank all the residents who expressed themselves in an outpouring of generosity. I want to call out in particular, there are many, but just in particular, Fergus Bradley, proprietor of the Maverick Smokehouse, who turned his restaurant into the rest and recuperation headquarters for our first responders and for all of those who then followed those first responders onto Duke Street. And to Don Bland, a local resident who took off work to organize food and drink donations to be brought to the Maverick Smokehouse and organized the volunteers to run the grill and to feed everybody who came, all of our first responders and everyone who followed them. <clears throat> and to those good folks who have organized GoFundMe efforts to support the people who were harmed. There, if you go to LeeFamilySupport.com, you can find ways to donate to support the Lee family, LeeFamilySupport.com. There's also a Durham Restaurant Workers Fund for those folks who lost their jobs because they're of the, of the blast. And Bull City Rebuilds. Those are both GoFundMe efforts. I feel gratitude to the other city staff who came right in behind those first responders from Public Works and Solid Waste and others. And many of them still have big jobs ahead related to this situation. We are, as our new hashtag says, and some of you may be wearing this today, this, this ribbon, Bull City Strong. We will rebuild these buildings and we will support the families in their loss and grief and recovery. And as we mourn and as we offer our support, we will celebrate, too, the first 150 years of a city that can produce heroes like this. And now I will ask you to join me in a moment of silence in memory of Mr. Lee, in support of those who remain injured and in support of their families, and in gratitude for the frontline city and county staff and so many others who served us so well in this time of crisis. Thank you. And now we will move on with our regular agenda. And I'm going to ask Councilmember Reese if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and colleagues. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to have a full house. Um, if it's your practice to do so, and if you're able, please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Council Member. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Shul. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Here. Council Member Alston. Here. Council Member Caballero. Here. Council Member Freeman. Present. Council Member Middleton. Here. Council Member Reese. Here. So much. Now we're going to, we've got a lot of great ceremonial items tonight, and I'm going to ask my city council colleagues to assist me 
in these, in these. And uh, I'm going to first ask a council member, Vernetta Austin, to come and assist me with the Neighbor Spotlight Award, which is being presented tonight to Kevin Walls. And uh, I will give this to council member Austin. She can call Mr. Walls and his family up. Yes, would Mr. Walls and anyone here to support Mr. Walls please join me up here at the podium? <laughs> well, yeah, come on. There's room for you. We'll find it. Great group, yeah. If y'all want to line up here, up. come on up. You just, yeah, file yeah. As many of you as I fit. No. Put a Durham Granite. The most stop. important part. Oh, well, yeah. Get on up here. Trying to get to the. Uh, <laughs> won't even let me. Uh... <laughs> Over to accounts. That's right. As you should. As you should. Yeah, we, we got gotcha. you. Come on. We need a bigger room. <laughs> Kevin, Mr. Wall says we need a bigger room. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> All right. Terrific. <laughs> All right. Good evening. Uh, Kevin Walls is the recipient of the Neighborhood Spotlight for the month of April 2019. The Neighborhood Spotlight Award recognizes community members that have gone above and beyond in volunteering their time to serve the community. This month, Kevin Walls, a resident of Creekside at Bethpage, was nominated and selected because of the wonderful work he has done in his neighborhood, including but not limited to serving as the treasurer and co-founder of the community's nonprofit, Pay It Forward, starting several social and informational clubs, including computer training sessions and weekly card games, and being a supportive neighbor, often referred to as the mayor of Creekside. I don't know, Mr. Mayor. What do you think? <laughs> uh, congratulations. When you move in. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Mr. Thank Walls, you. on being the April Neighborhood Spotlight for the city of Durham, and thank you for all the work you do to improve our Durham community. Um, you're all here, and if you'd like to say a few words, we'd love to love yeah, to hear them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, congratulations. Thank you. All right. That's a Thank surprise. You, so <laughs> you want to get a picture? Are you taking a picture? Oh. All right. Oh. Squeeze in here. Oh. Oh. Squeeze in here. Oh. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's great. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you all for being Thank here. You. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so okay. much. Come back to City Hall anytime. Great, great, city, great city. Thanks. We're always down here. We're always down here. Good. Well, that was an awesome support team there. <laughs> Our second uh, ceremonial event tonight, I'm going to call up Eddie Davis, our public historian. And Eddie is going to, we have a history moment. Uh, concerning Wilbur Hobby. Eddie, are you ready? Come on up. Eddie, Eddie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Uh, many people have seen or have heard about the movie Best of Enemies, uh, which has two real-life characters from Durham, uh, Anne Atwater and C.P. Ellis. Uh, but folks have also been very concerned about the fact that one of the characters in that film uh, is a man named Wilbur Hobby. Um, he played a very small role in the film, but a very big role here in Durham and across North Carolina and across the Southeast. Uh, Wilbur Hobby was born here in Durham in 1925. Uh, he was the son of a bricklayer and a cleaning lady uh, who divorced very early on in, the, in Wilbur's life. Uh, and the family struggled uh, Wilbur was here in 1934 when there was a general strike uh, of textile workers across North Carolina. Um, and he had to, during that depression period of time, had to sometimes stay out of school in order to stand in line to get groceries for his families. He had many odd jobs, including shining shoes, uh, and also he was the first uniformed bat boy for the Durham Bulls. Uh, he wore the number zero, and that nickname stuck with him over the years uh, because of that baseball connection and also because uh, Wilbur was not the thinnest person in the world. Uh, he grew up in what we call the Edgemont community, uh, down near the corner of... Um, in the Golden Belt area, um, in fact, um, uh, Council Member Freeman, he would have been one of your neighbors uh, in that area. Um, Wilbur Hobby was a World War, I, World War II veteran, and he was a Korean War veteran. Between the two wars, he was very involved in politics uh, and was involved in the famous um, race between Willis Smith and Frank Porter Graham in 1950 for a Senate seat. Um, and it is said in the information that I was able to research that during the first primary, the um, discussion was about the Reds, that is communism. And in the second, race, second um, primary, the runoff primary, it was about race. And of course, um, Wilbur Harvey supported Frank Porter Graham. Uh, he also worked at the American Tobacco Company and started out as a, a cleaner, a machine cleaner for 75 cents per hour. And he joined the Tobacco Workers International Union. Um, he was very, very involved in lots of labor activities and of course built a name for himself to the point where he became the uh, statewide director, statewide president of the AFL-CIO. Uh, he was very involved in lots of different activities, uh, and there were some ups and downs in his career. Uh, there was a famous scandal that had to do with um, a, an appropriation from, um, of, of, gun, of, of um, funds uh, that were designed to allow for worker training, training and there were people who were opposed to the work that he had done, particularly the work of bringing together blacks and whites. And you would think that that would not be anything that people would be upset about, but certainly it was. Um, we, times have changed drastically, and Wilbur Hobby had to endure lots of the um, um, animosity that came from people who uh, did not necessarily support him. Um, he was involved with the AFL-CIO, and I am honored to have with me this evening uh, James Andrews, who is a former statewide president of the Federation, and I'm going to share a little bit of time with him uh, before I stand back, but I do want to let you know that Wilbur Harvey ran for governor in 1972 and ran a good race, but he had lots of things stacked against him, uh, including his work with blacks and whites along the way, his work for a coalition of, um, to try to deal with things. Uh, that election of 1972 um, was not necessarily good for people who were supportive of some of the issues that he wanted. In 1972, the 
um, national election for president. Um, uh, um, George McGovern lost to Richard Nixon um, in 1972. Jesse Helms went to the Senate defeating Nick Galifianakis, who was from Durham. And of course, uh, Wilbur Harvey was not able to win in the, the gubernatorial election. Uh, Hargrove Stip Skipper Bowles became the Democratic nominee, and he lost to James Holshauser uh, in that final election. But all the time, Wilbur Harvey stood for things that many people might have found difficult back in those days. Uh, he stood for education. He stood for workers' rights. He stood for uh, economic equality. He stood against the Vietnam War and the waste of money that was going on then. And he stood for women's rights. So Wilbur Hobby lived a great life, uh, even though he had ups and downs along the way. He came back to Durham after serving um, a sentence for some um, things that went on. Uh, but he died here in Durham, uh, and he went back to work for the American Tobacco Company after he returned to Durham. He was a great man, and many of us had the privilege to live during the same time in which he lived uh, here in Durham. So I want to share the rest of my time, Mr. Mayor, with James Andrews, who knew Wilbur Hobby personally and who knew about the great relationship that he had with men and women, working men, men and women here in Durham and across North Carolina. James? Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Let me thank you, Mr. Mayor. The last time you saw my hat hair, <laughs> not nearly as much weight. But I want to thank you, um, the council, um, and my friend Eddie Davis for this opportunity to share this, this time with you. I commend you and the council and past leaders of the council uh, for allowing the space for ordinary folks uh, to make their case before you. I'm grateful for that. I did not hesitate when uh, my friend Eddie Davis called me and said I need some help, basically, by way of our current president, to share a little bit about my hero, my labor hero, my mentor, my friend, uh, President Wilbur Hobby. Did not hesitate one minute when he asked me to do that. So tonight, what I want to do in a fast way, I want to talk to you for a minute or share with you for a minute a few remarks related in, in, in this order. I want to give you an example of President Hobby's fight to organize workers in the state of North Carolina. Just a little example. I want to say a word about his strong commitment to racial justice and the need to build strong coalitions with other like-minded people. And then I want to end with a uh, conversation, a little, little word or two about the legacy that he left here for all of us. And throughout that, I want to just sprinkle, if you will. I want to just sprinkle my personal history into my remarks in order for you to get a, get a clear sense, if you will, of Wilbur Harvey impact on my life and the lives of so many around the state of North Carolina, and indeed, around the country. Far beyond the Dur Durham, far beyond Durham, President Harvey made a major effort to organize and support all workers' effort to organize unions around the state. Not all workers to organize unions around the state. If there was an organizing campaign or a contract fight in this state, you can always count on Wilbur Harvey to be on the front line, not the back line, on the front line of such a fight. The fact that President Harvey was at the front line of many issues, listen, listen to this, of many issues that gave, and, and providing leadership in fact, that gave white union leaders the courage, the space, to in fact stand up and do what's right. And I can only point to my friend, I work with CPL. And somebody missed that. By him taking far beyond his time, building those relationships in community, standing with black workers, standing for organizing, standing with civil rights organizations, women's rights, that gave folks who had the right heart 
the space and the courage to do the same. The organizing principle that we operate under, that Wilbur taught me, says that we must, when we go into an organizing campaign, we must understand that we've got to represent all workers and all workers have a right to participate. We never ask if you're gay, what religion you are, what church you go to, whether you're born uh, in the United States or elsewhere. We never ask that question. Because we believe all workers belong in the union and all workers should have a voice in forming the union. That's what we're going to have to Let me just give you a, a one example of organizing. In many years to organize and to get a contract at the J.P. Stevens plant in North and South Carolina. He supported the successful effort to get the Honorable Andrew Young to address the J.P. Stevens workers in Reno Graphics, North Carolina. As a young staff person of the North Carolina State FLCIO, I was assigned by Wilbur Harvey to work in North and South Carolina as a staff person of the organization organizing workers. I recall a time when we were boycotting J.P. Stevens products and President Harvey was with the A. Philip Randolph Institute at a national conference. We discovered because of that, that boycott of J.P. Stevens, we discovered that the hotel used J.P. Stevens tablecloths for the banquet. It was Wilbur Harvey who persuaded the more than 800 delegates to remove the tablecloths from the table in protest. President Harvey was a man of action. Wilbur Harvey understood better than most that workers need the support of the community. Church leaders, elected officials, and others in order, to, in order to overcome the fear tactics employed by anti-union corporations, yes, business round table, and yes, sometime public officials. The work of the North Carolina A. Philip Randolph Institute speaks to President Harper's legacy. The Institute made it possible for President Harvard to hire a full-time person of the public from one county on the staff of the AFL-CIO. The A. Philip Randolph Institute made that possible. That young man became the first full-time officer of any state federation in the country, of all the first full-time officer of a state federation in the country. That was Will Bahabi looking into the future, soaring into the future. That same young man is standing before you tonight. Thank you, Will Bahabi. <laughs> Thank you, Will Bahabi. If I had, I'm, I'm gonna get up here, I don't think I got five minutes. If I had enough time, <laughs> you know, if I just had enough time, I'd tell you about Will Bahabi saying to me, go down into that second district, don't worry about how folks gonna vote. Just go down there and register some voters. That's right. Now this Republican went on down there and registered some voters. If I had enough time, I'd tell you about being assigned to show to work and register for the working with the community, if I had enough time, because there was a guy running for mayor down that way, if I had enough time. If I had enough time, I would also just tell you that if we had speed dials on phone, Charles McClain, field director for the NAACP, would have had Will Bahabi's name and phone number on speed dial. If I had enough time, I'd tell you that George Johnson of the General Baptist Convention, if there was speed dial, they would have had Will Bahabi's name on speed dial. If I had enough time, mm -hmm. I'll tell you about Andrew Miles out of Henderson, North Carolina Senior Citizen Federation that would have had Wilbur Hobby's number on speed dial. Let me just end by this saying this, and I want to go back to the A. Philip Randolph Institute. Mm -hmm. The A. Philip Randolph Institute, I just attended a, I don't know, it had to be two, three hundred people out here in Durham Saturday night honoring the Honorable Justice Earl. Right? As a keynote speaker and others. But I want to just say a word about the Institute. Most of the redistricting and voter suppression lawsuits that have taken place recently in this state, the, one of the plaintiffs was the organization that Wilbur Hopper told me when he hired me that you need to build more A. Philip Brown. We built 12 chapters in the state of North Carolina. And, 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 and now 
The state leadership was a part of the plaintiffs that, that put those lawsuits in, running in and out of Winston-Salem doing that. I will close with the, another legacy of President Hobby. When I think about the legacy of President Hob Hobby, I must always remember and give him credit for the leadership that's serving now as president, that came behind me as president of the North Carolina State FLCIO. Today, we got to pass this stuff forward. He made a place for me, I made a place for the next person. Today, Mary B. McMillan, a young lady, is the first female president of the North Carolina State FLCIO. That's the legacy of Wilbur close by saying we'll always be grateful for the many contributions made by my friend, my leader, my mentor, the Honorable and late Wilbur Hobby. And Mr. Mayor, it's just so glad to see you. You turned a little gray, but you still got your hat. <laughs> <laughs> James when neither one of us had gray hair. Thank you so much, James, for being here. Eddie, thank you so much for that history moment as we recognize one of Durham's great historical figures. I also knew Wilbur Hobby, and as I, as in the all I will say is he was a different shaped person than he was a, than he was uh, seen to be in the movie. All right, so now we're going to move to National Community Development Week. And I'm going to ask Mayor Pro Tem Johnson if she would come join me here. And we'll ask uh, Reginald Johnson to also please join us at the podium. Good evening, everyone. We're reading the proclamation for National Community Development Week. Whereas the week of April 22nd through April 26, 2019 has been designated as National Community Development Week by the National Community Development Association to celebrate the Community Development Block, Block Grant CDBG program and the Home Partnership Program. And whereas since 1975, the CDBG program has provided annual funding and flexibility to local communities to provide decent, safe, and affordable housing, a suitable living environment, and economic opportunities to low and moderate income people. And whereas since 1992, the HOME program has provided funding to local communities to create decent, safe, and affordable housing opportunities for low income persons with over 1 million units of affordable housing having been completed nationally using HOME funds. And whereas over the past five years, the city of Durham has received a total of $9,224,827 in CDBG funds and $4,391,674 in home funds. And whereas the city of Durham has used CDBG and home funds directly or in partnership to address issues surrounding homelessness, including veterans homelessness, to promote home ownership opportunities for low and moderate income households, to develop hundreds of affordable rental units for low and very low income households, to provide repairs to homes of very low income seniors, to help revitalize neighborhoods, and to leverage millions of dollars in additional public and private investment within Durham neighborhoods. Now therefore I, Stephen Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim April 22 to 26, 2019 as National Community Development Week in Durham in support of these two valuable programs that have made a tremendous contribution to the vitality of the city's housing stock, infrastructure, public services, and the economic vitality of our community. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you so much, members of council, for this proclamation on Community Development Week. I'm Reginald Johnson, Director of the Department of Community Development. And first, I'd like to ask all of the members of the Citizens Advisory Committee uh, to please stand and wave your hand if you're standing. Uh, the committee uh, is appointed by the Durham City Council as well as the Durham uh, County Board of Commissioners. <laughs> They're appointed as representatives of the 
community to advise the community development department on how we should spend our money as well as develop policies to better improve affordable housing. And so we want to thank them always for their service and the work that they do, uh, especially for Community Development Week and indeed all year round. I also want to thank some staff, community development staff that are present uh, as well. And uh, from my position as community development director for the city of Durham, uh, I see the value of these two pro federal programs, mm -hmm. uh, home investment partnerships as well as in the CDBG program. Uh, the city of Durham has won many awards for our uh, participation with use of these funds. Uh, Eastway Village, Southside uh, has won, like I said, national awards uh, as well as state awards, and we're very proud of the work that we've been able to do. And the most important thing is to create uh, housing for those who uh, don't have affordable housing here in the city of Durham. And we've been in Durham uh, very proud of the work that we've done, and we're very thankful for the opportunity that you have given us, city council, in supporting us in our work. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Reginald. And now we're going to move to the week of the young child. And I'm going to ask Councilmember Freeman if she will join me here at the podium to present this proclamation. And I'm also going to ask uh, Laura Benson and uh, anyone else that she would like to have uh, come forward from uh, Durham's Partnership for Children. Thank you for the week of the child. Um, I really want to thank Ms. Uh, I want to thank uh, Laura Benson for her work with uh, Durham's Partnership for Children. She's been a great advocate for children in the city for a long time. Whereas early childhood from birth to age five represents the most critical time in children's development and is the foundation for success in school in life according to the National Association for Education of Young Children, and whereas Durham's Partnership for Children, along with Children Child Care Services Association and Durham Technical Community College, are celebrating the nationally recognized Week of the Young Child, and whereas making sure children are ready to learn is a community endeavor that involves parents, ch child care providers, policymakers, businesses, congregations, and community agencies, and whereas high-quality early child care Early, early care supports Durham's current work for, workforce for families with young children who rely on child care to work. And whereas early child care and education is an economic development strategy at the beginning of the talent pipeline, and whereas early childhood programs support children and families as they prepare to enter school, and whereas transition to kindergarten must be smooth, coordinated, a smooth coordinated process for children, parents, and schools that greatly minimize the achievement gap. And whereas comprehensive bilingual evidence-based programs in parent education and literacy increase family stability. And whereas early interventions, family supports, education, and education can help break the cycle of poverty and dismantle systems that perpetuate race, racial disparities and inequities that affects more than half of the Durham's children and create opportunities in early childhood that have a lasting impact in the community. And whereas our community leaders have invested significant resources in research, data analysis, and programmatic interventions for young children. And whereas Durham continues to be a leader in statewide and national efforts that prioritize children birth to age five and their families. And whereas the Durham City Council do hereby proudly recognize that the ages of birth to five are the most critical time in children's development, which builds a foundation for success in school and in life. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shule, mayor of the city of Durham, North Carolina, do here proclaim April 8th through the 15th, 2019, as the week of the young child in Durham, and hereby recognize Durham's Partnership for Children Child Care Services Association and Durham Technical Community College for its exemplary, exemplary model of collaboration, which continues to improve the landscape of early education for Durham residents and benefits present and future benefits presence in future generations. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina, 
this 15th day of April, 2019. And if you have comments. Well, Mayor Schuer, Council Members, Manager Bonfield, Interim Attorney Reberg, Clerk Schreiber, my name is Laura Benson, and on behalf of Durham's Partnership for Children, on behalf of Linda Chappelle, Senior Vice President of Child Care Services Association, and Kathy Colley Robinson, Director of the Early Education Program at Durham Technical Community College, and the Board Chair of Durham's Partnership, I'm here to say thank you for this proclamation and for your unwavering support for investing in our youngest children. In the past, we were often the lone voice in the wilderness about early childhood with very few followers. In recent years, more focus was paid to the importance of young children, but we were like a solo diva on a stage singing alone to an attentive but less engaged audience. Now, you have shown your commitment to and participation in a movement. We are simply conductors of the symphony, bringing harmony to this great chorus of champions. And you, with your counterparts on the county commission and the board of education, are center stage, leading the way and building a stronger, healthier community. So tonight, you might see many shirts <coughs> in red. I'd like you to wave your hand if you are a board member of one of our collaborating partners or have been a board member. Are you agency staff? Keep your hands held high. Are you agency staff? Are you early educators? There should be a whole row of you now. <laughs> Child care owners and directors. And are you students? who will be our teachers and directors of the future. Thank you for joining us in this movement and making this possible. As our city leadership, you serve far beyond these walls, as you certainly know, guiding our work and making a difference in the lives of children. Our collaborations and mutual accountabilities run deep. We're grateful in particular for city staff like Jason Jones, Toya Merritt, and Laura Biediger, who serve on our board and committees, and many others before them. We appreciate participating at city festivals and events to enroll children in literacy programs like Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. We share a vision to end family homelessness, and we join you in addressing the needs of young children who experience homelessness and who need the services of our diversion, shelter, rapid rehousing and aftercare programs. As many at the recent Faith Summit showed, we join you in a commitment to eradicate child poverty and to dismantle structural racism that holds inequity and disparities shamefully in place. We know that investing in young children is the key for Durham to continue being a thriving center for education and entrepreneurship our city's burgeoning development calls forth the need for deeper commitment to early childhood, to continue to draw people to our community, to improve school readiness, to support the current workforce, reduce crime, and prepare the workforce of tomorrow. Your support of the pre-K task force and now the implementation of Durham pre-K is a great example of your bold leadership. We're in the spotlight as we blaze new trails for expansion. We want all children in Durham to be prepared for success in school <coughs> and in life. Again, thank you for this proclamation and for leading the way. Thank you so much. Councilmember Freeman, and thank you so much, Laura, and to our, especially to our early childhood educators, thank you all for being here, and thank you for what you do every day. You, uh, we are doing the most important work in the world, and just want you to know we appreciate you. And now I'm going to ask Councilmember Charlie Reese, who's already here, <laughs> to join me at the podium, and I'm going to ask. Uh, LaVon Barnes and others he may want to bring with him uh, to also join us uh, for 
the Young Male Achievers Day of Service and Scholarship Proclamation. Uh, Councilmember Reese. Let's do it. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I think we're going to try to take a picture after. If that's all right. Yes. Great. Levon, I think this is about two years in the making, isn't that right? Yeah, about that's the first time we talked about this, yeah. Um, I'm going to read a proclamation uh, um, declaring today Young Male Achievers Day of Service and Scholarship, and after that, Levon Barnes, who uh, leads this program, is going to say a few words on behalf of the young men that he is uh, leading through this, uh, this experience. <clears throat> Whereas mentoring is a proven, effective strategy that helps young people by matching them with caring and responsible mentors who help build character, encourage success, lift expectations, and inspire young people to do their best, serving as friends, role models, teachers, and sources of stability and support during a critical time in their lives. And whereas mentoring strengthens our community's economic and social well-being by helping young people fulfill their potential while helping maintain healthy families and promoting more vibrant communities. And whereas Young Male Achievers, or YMA, was founded in 2005 in Hyattsville, Maryland, and was reintroduced in 2014 by LaVon Barnes at the School for Creative Studies here in Durham, North Carolina, after he saw that there was a serious need to mentor and guide young people. Whereas over the past five years, YMA membership has increased from 24 members in the first year to over 100 members currently, and YMA members have devoted over 45,000 hours working in service to their community in a multitude of ways, including volunteering at the Durham branch of the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina, sponsoring and participating in a leadership summit at North Carolina State University, providing 70 meals for 70 families, excuse me, with Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday meals, and countless other community service projects in Durham, often in partnership and collaboration with other community organizations, such as Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Habitat for Humanity of Durham, the American Heart Association, Ronald McDonald House, North Carolina Central University, Duke University, and many, many others. And whereas members of th the three graduation, graduating classes of YMA have been awarded nearly $1 million in college scholarships, all told. And whereas YMA has been recognized by the Durham City Council, the Durham County Board of Commissioners, the Durham Public Schools Board of Education, state and federal legislators, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper and President Barack Obama. And whereas while YMA members are rightly proud of their accomplishments, they are by no means satisfied. And each of them fully intends to continue their service to the community in the years to come. Now therefore I, Stephen M. Shule, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim April 15th, 2019 as Young Male Achievers Day of Service and Scholarship in the City of Durham. <laughs> Brush your shoulders off, man. Go brush them off. <laughs> the mayor would also urge all residents of the city of Durham <laughs> to commend these young leaders of young male achievers for their accomplishments and their example of service and scholarship. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of City Durham, North Carolina, this 15th day of April 2019. Congratulations. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hopefully, I'm tall enough. Uh, I promise I won't break because uh, they know how I get. I'm going to be strong today. I'm going to be strong. Thank you, Councilman Reese, Mayor Shule, and the rest of this unbelievable council for this honor. In the censored words of Uncle Joe, this is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> this proclamation is about every one of these young men that you see. I would like to thank some important people first. First, I would like to thank my principal, Renee Price, who is an awesome leader. I would also like to thank my colleagues from the School for Creative Studies. Some of them are here today. From day one, they embraced this movement and this program. It's been truly a team effort. 
to every advisor, Mr. Castro, Mr. Hodge, Mr. Brotsman, Mr. Harbison, and Mr. Marshall, and our newest advisors, Mr. Goff and Mr. Susan, who represent our YMA juniors from E.K. Poe Elementary School. I would like to tell you, it takes a village to do what we do, and I'm lucky that you all are in my village. To the parents, if you're a parent of a YMA person, stand up real quick, because I, I think that's the most important thing is the parents. <laughs> to the parents who have been with me since the beginning, and those who are my current parents, thank you for trusting in me and uh, allowing me to pay forward what was given to me to your son. I just want to quickly say that it doesn't cost any amount of money to be a mentor. We live in a community where at some point you're going to be around a young person with whom you might take an interest in. Just by taking the time to invest in that kid might be the difference between life and death, jail or college, and failure and success. We may disagree about things in this community, but one thing I know is that we take care of our own. Everybody who has ever been successful in some way has someone to show them the way. Lastly, to my guys, and I won't break, I promise you. This is what happens when your dreams, when, this is what happens to your dreams, excuse me, when you put actions to words. Each one of you has made an impact in this community and in your school. You've made an impact on your advisors. You have made a huge impact on me. And each one of you should be very proud of the work that you have done thus far. The guys who are standing behind me actually, uh, the funny story is, I'm not on the script, but y'all catch up. <laughs> the very first time I introduced this to the school, I had an interest meeting, and one kid showed up. That kid. <laughs> Daniel Mandigo, one kid. So, that's why his name is Inception. So if you don't know about the, the, some of these kids are wearing line shirts, they got names and stories behind them. But I had to think about it differently. So I asked my colleagues to send me the names of the kids that you feel have showed leadership potential. They might be on the, on the other side of trouble sometimes. And so I got like 100 names. Now, mind you, we only had 300 kids. At the time, we was still a baby uh, when it comes to DPS schools. And out of those 100 kids, the 24 kids showed up. 24 to, 70, uh, 24 to 45 in year two, that's when Mark Middleton, Councilman Mark Middleton spoke to my guys, to 75 to over 100, where it was just high school, eighth grade through 10th grade at the time. Now I have fourth grade to 12th grade, and it's just growing. So. I just want to say thank you. I know each member of this council, most of you have spoke to my guys. We truly appreciate you. Just in the community, thank you. Embrace these young men, because I know in Durham sometimes good, de good deeds go unnoticed. But today, on this day, instead of it being known about, known as tax day, it gets to be known as Young Male Achievers Day of Service and uh, Scholarship. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. We're going to have a we're going to have a photo interlude. Just take us a minute.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great to see the young man. And Mr. Goff, welcome to you. You were the mentor to my son, Solly, and it's great. I'm glad to see you're still doing it. Thank you so much. Good job. Okay. Uh, our next uh, proclamation, I'm going to ask uh, Council Member Mark Anthony Middleton if he would join me, as well as uh, Chief Robert Zoldis, our fire chief, uh, for a proclamation regarding sound the alarm. Council Member? My thanks to His Honor the Mayor for allowing me to read this proclamation and then yield to Chief Zaldos for words. Um, Chief Zaldos let me know that simply being a member of the council does not allow you to drive the fire trucks. <laughs> I was greatly, that's why I ran, essentially, so I was greatly disappointed. Hear these words. Just going to wait for the chamber to be in order, get that back door. <laughs> 